Again, what do we see in the next prayer? Will they not then contemplate the Quran? Or do some hearts have their locks on them? The very powerful verse of the Quran. And we find late uh, in another ayah as well, the Quran, the same uh, beginning. Do they not then contemplate the Quran? Had it not been from had it been from other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would have found in it much incongruity. That a lot of it there'll be discrepancies and differences and contradictions in the Quran, but they can't find this. So though, if, if you look at it, this con- this context is not of, you know, it's not talking to scholars, it's not talking to people who are who are you know experts in the Quran, it's talking to the kuffar, it, it's talking to those who don't believe in Tawheed. He doesn't, they don't believe in the Prophet Sallallahu They don't believe in the Quran as being true. They're not even Muslim, but it's telling them, why don't you reflect on the Quran? If you reflect on the Quran, be critical. Yes, look for you know differences, look for contradictions. Look for it, you're not going to find it. If you don't find it, then accept that the Quran is from Allah because it's, it's completely perfect. That Had it been from somebody else, had it been from a human being or from a jinn even, then there would have been some kind of imperfection there. But the fact that everything in the Quran is completely perfect shows that the, the being that it came from is also perfect. And that can only be a non-mortal. It will be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The point I'm stressing on is that the context here is of the non-Muslims. So we being Muslims, shouldn't we have even more zeal to ponder over the Quran? Instead of being told things like, "Oh, we're not supposed to ponder over the Quran. The Quran has got hundred, uh, you know, there's hundred ways of interpreting the Quran. Uh, you know, you don't end up making a mistake and doing DIY uh, interpretations, or those types of things. We don't need to go into that discussion. But essentially, that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about uh, in-depth uh, exegesis of the Quran or interpreting the Quran and issuing laws and uh, placing judgments based on it or deriving theological points necessarily. This is not what we're talking about here. That starts a scholarly thing and that can stay with scholars or experts as we have with every field. But the point of the Quran about the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the belief in the last day, the stories of the prophets, the 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 parables in the Quran, those types of things, there are, there's no harm in uh, you know, reflecting on it, reading reading a translation if you don't know Arabic. Those of you who, those of you who do know Arabic, then to read a tafsir or something on the side to put it to the roots of the scholars and to have your own personal reflections as well. You see something like Surah Yasin, for example, which is a common favorite among uh, a lot of the Muslim community. Surah Yasin, there is no there is no laws in there. There there are no legal uh, verses in there. Everything in there is actually about da'wah. It's about uh, you know, reminding yourself of the of, of the next life, fixing your character in this life, those types of things. Pondering over that, reflecting over that, reading a transition of that, it's not going to, you know, deviate you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says elsewhere in the Quran, uh, in Surah Al-Baqarah actually, about the Quran itself, that uh, Allah misleads people through the Quran and he guides people through the Quran. So people sometimes use this to say, oh, we shouldn't actually study the Quran because you might become deviated. However, Allah says in the very next sentence that the only people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will mislead through the Quran are those who are uh, transgressors are, and sinful and have an evil intent to begin with. If you are sincere and you are genuine, you want to learn about Allah, you want to learn about the Quran, you want to know about how to live your life in a way that's objectively good and there's a meaning in there rather than trying to please, you know, uh, some type of people or, or a community or a society or or a dominant narrative or a philosophy um, you want to know exactly how, you want to uh, leave all of that or you want to um, transcend all of that go beyond the narrative of the people and you want to see what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself tell us there's nothing wrong with that if you are sincere with it then Allah will guide you how many convert Muslims or revert Muslims have you seen who have accepted Islam without looking at the translation of the Quran not many. Most people I know, they, it's, it is the Qur'an that actually brought them to Islam. So if a non-Muslim can read the Qur'an and become Muslim, why should a Muslim fear reading a translation of the Qur'an or, or contemplating of the Qur'an and think he's going to become a deviant and not be to leave Islam? This, this absolutely doesn't make any sense. And it's never been the case throughout history either. There are anecdotal contexts uh, here and there, but these are anecdotal. And if somebody has a, uh, a 
you know, a wicked in, intent to begin with, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will deal with them accordingly. We just make dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep our intentions sincere. And he keep us guided on the right path as he wishes us to, to be on. <laughs>